Hello, welcome to BVP Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Cartwright, and today I'm with... Hi, I'm Hannah Cole. I am a life skills teacher at the high school. I also teach PE class and have a Best Buddies Club. I'm Ida Newton. I'm a special education teacher. I teach basic English. I'm a case manager. I'm also co-sponsored of student council. All righty. First of all, let me say thank you so much for coming. I know this was a little out of the way, but personally, I just have to say, this is probably one of the podcasts I'm most excited for just because of what you guys do. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start off with some questions, shall we? First off, can you tell me something about yourself? Most people don't know. Let's get the questions rolling, get something interesting out there. Do you want to go first? Um, well, I am terrified of elevators. I'm claustrophobic. So if we get in an elevator, please do not breathe or move because I will freak out. Is that why you came up the stairs when you came? Yes. <laughs> That's exactly the reason why I am terrified of elevators. I'm yes. ordering that. <laughs> yes, I'm terrified. to be healthy. Yeah, that too. But I'm terrified about elevators. Like even talking about it right now, I'm like getting a little like antsy about it thinking about an elevator just yeah like oh no like closing in and like yeah be claustrophobic but yeah that's not i good. actually there's a glass elevator i've been to in houston when you just go straight up you can keep going on my in the air and i'm just sitting there like no <laughs> see nope nope won't find me in that elevator at all sorry <laughs> yeah i mean that's all, not the only thing i'm terrified of cockroaches too who isn't yeah but, i mean that's fair. They're like gross. go get one near me because i will cry <laughs> <laughs> how about you miss cole um, other than my inability to wear matching socks, um, I like to renovate. So we, uh, we're renovating our house. I'm pretty good at like taping and floating and texturing and painting. Not good enough to get hired, but I've, <laughs> I've gotten pretty good at a necessity. I so like I, hobby of house flipping maybe? Yeah, I, I do enjoy it. Yeah. So that's a lot of fun. That's a very cool hobby. So just wanting to decorate and customize a house just to see how it changes. I would love to learn how to decorate better. More than art. Yeah. YouTube has everything out there for you. I call it YouTube certified. That's oh, how we learn how to do everything. <laughs> I'm YouTube certified at a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? Anywhere. No limitations. Paid for by Jeopardy. I would go to Italy just because of the food, the cheese, the yeah, pasta. Like that? That's like, yes. See, I, I'm thinking Greece because like the whole Mamma Mia thing. Like, I mean, that's beautiful too. Though. Oh my God, that'd be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Me too. I own the whole soundtrack. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, no, mine's Italy just to go eat the food. I love food, so. Either place I go, I'm getting at least 20 pounds fatter. Yeah. And it, I'm, I mean, that's when, that's when you go on vacation, so yeah. you can enjoy the food. Like, yeah. forget about health-wise. Like, enjoy. I'm going to enjoy all the cheeses. Everything's like, calorie-free on vacation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On vacation, that's a different that's a different diet than what you're used to. When you come back, the vacation diet, we don't talk. Yeah, I'm back at, back at home. there, what we ate there stays there. Yeah. I'm, I'm back at home. I'm me yeah. now. Yeah. Vacation me is gone. <laughs> All right. What has been the highlight of this year so far for you guys? Like when you think back on a year, you say, this is my proudest moment, my most accomplished, or this is just what I find as my achievement as this year. Hmm. Can it be something that's still about to happen? Yes. Because I'm really excited my oldest is graduating. Like, my first senior, like, I think I think that's really exciting. He's had a great year. He went to state. Like, that was, football was amazing. It's, so I think, you know, getting him through that, seeing my first kid through high school, it's pretty awesome. As a parent, I feel like that's just, like, kind of like what you've always, like, ever since you held your kid when you when they were first born, you're like, you're going to graduate one day. Yes. And I'm going to see you grow as a person. Yes. Yeah. Well, mine is also, I guess, my oldest moved out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's a highlight, but it's like a good <laughs> thing for him. I mean, he's 22. And also my son is graduating this year as well. And he's going to be going to college and just excited to see him, you know, with his future plans. He wants to do construction management. So I'm excited for that as well. That's interesting, too, because you have one kid that's leaving mm -hmm. and going out on his life. Finally, be like, OK, mom, I'm going to figure out yeah. what I want to be another kid who's like, he's finishing up and about to figure out what he, right. his brother just what his brother just got done doing and figuring out yeah. he's about to do that. Yep, exactly. It's tough, but you always have a lot of respect for parents, especially parents that they're that are like, you got to do your homework, you got to do this, because the only reason you guys say this because you care. Yeah. You wouldn't be, if you didn't care, you'd be like. Not because we enjoy it. <laughs> right. Oh, trust right. me, my dad did not enjoy reading problems, so he'd be like, okay, 
So the train is going 55 miles and the sky is blue <laughs> on a red day. How many fingers am I holding up? Yeah. It's like, it feels what? like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is the top of your bucket list? Like, if you think of this one thing that you want to do before you go from this world, what would it be that you haven't done yet? Other than finish renovating my house and, like, completing the upstairs addition that we're working on and hoping to get our kids in before they leave the house after high school. Um, oh, Lord, I don't know. I'm, mine's just be traveling. I know. Traveling would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's just traveling. And, I mean, being able to have date night without having to get a babysitter would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty high on my list right now. <laughs> that's high on your list, I guess. Yeah, I mean, starting over four year old, it's kind of yeah. hard to find a sitter. But I mean, I will be just honestly be traveling with my husband and sure. and with my kids because I'm one of those moms that I want my babies with me at all times. They might not feel the same about me, but I want them with me at all times. And it's just to be able to travel with them and just see the world and and also make sure they're okay. Like yeah. they're your baby. Yeah, babies are very vulnerable. And that's the yeah. time in life where they're basically in their like human egg form. Basically, you're just holding them. You're like, okay. Make sure this egg doesn't crack until it becomes a little chip. Yeah. And I mean, no matter what age it's, it's always to be, be it's always gonna be that way. Yeah. So it's true. Here's a question for you guys. What's your favorite memory from the time you were a student yourself? Like when you go back and think there's one time after all that I had to go through in school, I'm finally out of there. What was the one thing that you were like, all right, that wasn't too bad? I remember prom. I mean, we were just talking about proms, so that could be why, but Prom was really memorable. That was a lot of fun. Like, my parents surprised me with the limo for us, all our friends, and um, that was a lot of fun. Um, mine was, one of the memories was playing powder puffs. And oh, I we, didn't love that. You know, we were able to, the guys would dress up as the cheerleaders, the girls would play, the football players. That was, like, a lot of fun. And just seeing, like, our, you know, our athletes dressed in cheerleaders and all done up in makeup and the hair wig. I mean, they took it to the next level. And us girls were like, yeah, let's go. We're going to take them down. And that's like one of the memories. And just, I mean, I have a lot of memories from high school. that I'd... I don't think our boys dressed up, but like we played, like I played football. And then there was like a big fight between a lot of the girls on the two different teams. Like it was so bad. Like my year was the last year they had powder puffs. Really? <laughs> yeah. No, our, I, I'm going to tell you, our guys like got cheerleaders. Like they were wearing the cheerleading outfits. And like, these, I, I still pull up some pictures where they're like the guys with the pink nails and the makeup. And they were like enjoying it, enjoying it. Like it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I don't even know they still do it back in high school. My school. Maybe I wish they did that here. That's fun. It, it's yeah. a lot. It was a lot of fun. I'd be the first one up there. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. What's your favorite thing about working with special education students? I love that they have so much joy every day. Um, at least mine do. My, my kids are always happy to come to school. They're happy to see me. Um, it's almost like the best of both worlds where it's like you have pre-K or kindergarten and like you get hugs and they love you and they love school. But yet like they're still independent and they're happy and like we're doing high school things. So it's a great combination. Like, I can sing. They love my voice. I can tell <laughs> jokes. I'm always funny. You know, like we can play like kickball and have all the fun things going on. And they're just happy to be there. And they make my day so bright. I mean, I love it just because I love to be there for my kids. They know that I'm always there. My door is always busy. Like I'm always getting knocked. They're like, where's Miss Newton? Where's Miss Newton? I'm like, oh, I'm here. And I love, you know, that they look for me for answers and for help. And I'm always there. I'm never going to turn them away or anything like that. I'm always there to help them in any way I can. I mean, it's what I love. I always see it as when I go to school, I always have a mom at home, but I always know I have at least like three moms at school. I can see That is so true. Those. Yeah. That's so true. You, Miss High, and probably Miss Bailey. Because I'm always like, those are the three teachers that I'm like, if there's anywhere I need to go, like if I'm like, for example, star testing and I'm, I'm clicked out of my classroom, I'm like, well, I have three options. I'm going to either Miss Heights, Miss Newtons, or Miss Bailey. It's for Miss Fury. My door is always open. I try to do that for a lot of kids too, outside of life skills. So yeah. it's a lot of fun having friends come in from other classes and hang out with us. Yeah, just to kind of, even if you guys are busy, just kind of sit there and like back. Yeah, I've even done that in Miss Littleton's before. Yeah, she's a re she's a really good teacher. I really like. Um, I think we like to be included in stuff too. It makes mm -hmm. them happy. Yeah, <laughs> it really does. Here's a fun question for you guys. What inspired you to be part of the special education education field? What inspired you and motivated you to want to be here? Wait and see, Andy, do you want to go first? Do you Mine is to think. Advocating for the kids, in all honesty. Somebody needs to advocate for them, and I'm the one to do it. And I love to do it. I love to be there for the kids and give them the support that they need. And, yeah, 
just make sure that they're successful at the end. That's also what matters to me. Mine is, um, so my mom was a, was a life skills teacher and or she was a para first and then a teacher. But so she was at my junior high. So sixth grade, seventh grade, and I think we moved in eighth grade. So sixth grade and seventh grade every day, I would go in and help my mom in the life skills class. I would take the students in, help them wash their hands. I'd help them get ready for things. Um, so I was really exposed to life skills from a very young age. And then when I went to high school, she was also the life skills teacher there. So again, I would go in every day and help her out. I went on field trips with them after I graduated. I would you come back and just volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> so I spent a lot of times, a lot of time in the life skills room, and it's really where I found my passion. And um, I was a long-term sub for my mom back in the day. Wow. I used to sub at the high school, like in the life skills room before I even got my certificate. So it's just always been kind of where. I felt like I well, it's kind of like me. Like I started as an inclusion aide, and I mean, originally I wanted to be a coach. Obviously, I'm. 40 years old, 4K40 plus. I can't do that now with a young end. It takes a lot of time, but just becoming an inclusion aide, I fell in love with it. And then that's pushed me yeah. to become, just stay as a special education teacher once I graduated from college. You guys could almost use that as your interesting fact about yourself that nobody knows. So, yeah, especially yeah. yours. I didn't know that about no. you. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. You never told me. I actually thought I was going to be a math teacher first, though. So my degree is like 90% math. Like, I love math. Yeah. Um, it's also kind of weird. But then I was like, why did I ever go to math when I yeah. I love life skills? So yeah. like my associate's is kinesiology. And because I was looking for the coaching field and yeah. then nope, here I am, special education. And I love it. Wouldn't change it. <laughs> That's always a good skill to have because one, it's an incredible people skill because it's always something where they feel like they're different than everybody else. They feel like there's just I know because I started out with dyslexia and that's and I had when I was younger that was really bad for me dyslexic and being colorblind made me feel really different mm -hmm. around other people made me feel like i don't even see the same colors as these people yeah, yeah and but i see people around me like that i understand and if there's ever anything that's like bothering them or um disrupting them i'm gonna look for one of you guys i'm not gonna try to fix that myself because they're gonna see me and they're gonna be like that's a stranger yeah. they're gonna say something to me but if I can say whatever I want, and it might not go through completely, but if I come to you guys, they trust you guys. They under they you guys have been working with them for years. You guys are pretty much like their school parents. <laughs> I like to consider myself there as like Mama Newton. <laughs> you are yeah. Mama Newton. Yeah. <laughs> Got Mama Newton and Mama Cole on the podcast. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Here's a question that I think would be fun. Um, What's your most unusual talent or skill a student has shared with you? That a student does? Yeah, like they were like, hey, Miss Coley, Miss Newton, check this out. Or maybe they just, you guys kind of saw them doing that. I was like, that's not something a human normally does. Oh, that's I have a student that can dance, and he's shown me a few little cute jigs. He's shown you too. Yeah, I've oh, seen his dance. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I've had kids that are like really artistically talented oh, yeah yeah like i've seen that like where sometimes i'm like work. i'm in awe of like what talent they have and yeah. they, you know they don't showcase it enough because they're shy about it yeah but yeah i mean that's one, amazing one of the things that i've seen like was a lot of artists and mm -hmm. stuff like that so yeah i've been in three art classes obviously throughout the years and i can say confidently very confidently that I think having a mental disability makes you a better artist. It helps you think differently. It, when you put something in front of yourself, you're not going to approach that typically with maybe you cis color, maybe you set, maybe you're just like, I want to try something different. I feel different today. No, yeah. that's how. That's where I started with my art. I just was like, I want to do something different now, and that's where it goes. And it just you do that. Be your natural self. Yeah, that's always the best thing because I always uh, myself. I grew up around a few friends that had. I had. Um, friends was like ADD, ADHD, autism, even Asperger's when it used to be a current term. Yeah. And it was just, I never, ever saw them any differently. If anything, I saw them almost above me because I was like, he can throw a baseball twice as far. He can, he can fit. He knows how to make money at his age. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. He knows how to like draw a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's almost like sitting in the taking a step back and just like stepping out of your own body and being like looking at this person where it's just like you and them talking and you step from there, there's not a single thing different about you two yeah. and there never will be. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's differently is that you're each a different person you think differently and that's every person in this world. Oh yeah. And that's how I see it. Um, 
What's your favorite memory from your time as, oh, I already went over that question. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, if you could have a classroom pet, what would it be and why? Maybe an animal you have a personal connection with or. Can it be like real or imaginary? Of course. Because <laughs> I would pick a unicorn. <laughs> unicorn. Or a pegasus. Oh, that would be my class pet. It had to be the Pegasus, because then, like, not only could I, like, get around the school faster, but I could just, like, fly home. You could just fly home. Okay, so you're using it for your own purposes. Well, maybe <laughs> maybe we wanted a pizza party, and I could get there really quick. Yeah. That'd be cool showing up to a pizza party on a Pegasus. Right. I'll get everyone's attention. Yeah, okay, Pegasus. I can't honestly think. I've never even thought about a, a classroom pet. Like, it's never crossed my I've mind. I've had fish. I've had birds. I had a bunny. I could tell you they all are. No, I'm good. I'm not having another one. We, that's had, about we, had, we had a bunny at home and that's not happening. N yeah. You know what? I'm good. I'll pass on the pet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can always go for a nice pet rock. I like oh, pet rocks. There you go. Yeah. Okay, go, go it it just, it could, yeah. Pet rock and just sit there. Pet rock's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny you said Texas in middle school. My um, classes were split. Like each student had a um, lanyard and it was... And there was three different um, classes and groups you'd be split in for, like, activities or, like, for example, pep rallies. That's how they split you up. Mm -hmm. They And mine was actually a Pegasus. There was Pegasus, Griffin, and I believe Serpents. Nice. It's Frank Black Middle School. So as soon as you said Pegasus, I just got my, like, sixth grade mugshot looking um, <laughs> ID photo <laughs> and that dumb little Pegasus in corner. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Aaron Cartwright, sixth grade. Pegasus. <laughs> that was our new confident booster for me. That's great. <laughs> um, let's see here. What's your favorite lesson or activity to teach and why? Maybe something that you've made most progress as students in. Maybe just, it's just because you said earlier you had a um, fascination at math before you actually went into life skills. I try to help with the math stuff, but I think my favorite stuff is like cooking lessons. I like cooking lessons and I like lessons that we do together. That's what I was going to say. Lessons we co-teach together. So we have fun because if I can't explain a certain way, she comes and saves the day and is able to break it down a little bit better than I could. Um, I think we had more fun when we acted out Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. We read Romeo and Juliet and I tried to outdo her. Yeah. <laughs> and the kids are looking at us like, what is wrong with the all? Oh, but we were, we were into it. Yeah. And they into it. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I think, I mean, I think it's more like, the acting part of it, the yeah. like the, I mean, English is English. It's really a subject. So I like I like lessons where I can say like really dumb like off the wall things, and the kids are like, "What?" Yeah. But they're like, "Wait, I, that makes sense." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. I yeah. really you know, like English. They have all the idioms where it's like something that's like, "Remember this on the test." My grandma never falls asleep in yeah. Idaho, yeah. and I'm like, "Okay, yeah, that's good to know." <laughs> yeah, and you can sing the quadratic equation. That's, that's, that's a good way to remember that one too. Oh God, I'm not doing that again. I was like, I've already done it. I've like, already done it twice. Sing it now that you said it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sing us the quadratic <laughs> formula? No, <laughs> these people are going to enjoy it as much as my class. <laughs> are you sure? Pretty sure. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have today. Thank you so much for coming. This Thanks was amazing. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you for watching BVP podcast. I was Aaron Cartwright, your host. Mm -hmm.